When you hear the words, most popular FPS game, what comes to mind? Halo? Call of Duty? CSGO? Valorant? These would all be reasonable guesses, but unfortunately, they would all be wrong. Because the most popular FPS game in the world isn't made by a AAA developer. It's not a game that kids were playing on Christmas morning after opening their new Xbox 360. Heck, if you're watching this from North America, odds are you haven't even heard of this game. But it's a title that would be picked up by one of the largest video game publishers in the world. It would be played internationally in 80 different countries with more than 400 million users. And it would develop an esports scene that in terms of size and money could rival that of CSGO, Dota, and Overwatch. This is the biggest first person shooter you've never heard of. This is Crossfire. Now, before we start on today's video, we'd like to kindly ask that if you enjoy our content, please think about subscribing and hitting the bell to stay up to date. We want to keep making amazing content for you, and it would help a ton. Thank you. Crossfire is a South Korean FPS game developed by Smilegate. Released domestically on May 3rd, 2007, in China in 2008, and North America in 2009, Crossfire was a pretty simple game that mirrored many contemporary titles. 2009, 2010-ish, when like the true golden age happened. I think Soldier Front was a little bit before that. 2010, it was like Soldier Front, you could play Sudden Attack, AVA, Combat Arms. I think there was like a black shot and there was just like seven free, free to play FPS games and it was just booming. The FPS community was going strong. Though these games tended to look and feel pretty similar, they each had their quirks which made them unique. What kind of separated this game from like the other games in like the golden age and how it kind of like always brought me back was how satisfying it was to kill people. <laughs> like whenever whenever you get a kill in the game, it always tell you your kill streak be like Next shot! double kill, triple kill, and it's just like the endorphins and the hype that you get, you're always like, yo, I'm gonna kill another one, I'm gonna get another one, and then it just it hyped me up. It was the, the game always had an announcer and it was just beautiful. This was also a time when video games weren't all about esports. Unlike modern titles like Valorant and CSGO, which put just about all of their emphasis on competitive game modes, developers weren't afraid to play around with wackier modes. One such was Ghost Mode. Ghost Mode is probably one of the egotist like, game modes ever. It was just this entire sense of like, one side is invisible, they're kind of like ninjas, and they only have knives, versus another team that has guns planning the bomb. And you'd have to like, stick together with your team to like kind of like trade for them, watch them get knife in the back, and then you're shooting literally nothing, just spraying every corner, and like, it was absolutely amazing. But for the most part, there was little that made Crossfire stand out from other games being released around the same time. Crossfire is often compared to Counter-Strike 1.6 and Counter-Strike Source. The guns look similar, they both have the same search and destroy game mode, and there's not much separating the two, visually or stylistically. For those playing FPS titles when Crossfire was released, it would have been a hard bargain to switch over to a new title that looked exactly the same as the game you're already playing. For these reasons and others, Crossfire never developed a massive competitive scene in North America. Being released into an already saturated market and little developer support in North America were problems on their own. But CF didn't do itself any favors when it came to microtransactions. Like many free-to-play titles of the time, pay-to-win mechanics were everything. If you've watched our video on guns, you'll know that in many free-to-play games, if you want to remain competitive, you have to pay for the best weapons with real-life money. Crossfire was no different. Everyone who took the game seriously paid top dollar to get the best gear. Better guns and other various upgrades, paying to win was an integral part of the game, which seriously hurt the game's popularity in North America. But this is where our story takes an unexpected turn. In other parts of the world, Crossfire was, and is to this day, the FPS game. Since its release in 2007, the game has grossed more than $10 billion and has seen up to 8 million concurrent users playing the game at a single time. Objectively speaking, it's one of the most successful video games ever created. But how did it happen? And why are you just hearing about it now for the first time? While Smilegate was the game's publisher for most of the world, in China, the game was published by a company called Tencent. Yeah, that Tencent. 
a multinational corporation with stakes in Epic Games, Supercell, Riot Games, and tons of other companies, Tencent is simply a powerhouse in the gaming industry. And while in North America Crossfire was kind of just a footnote, in China, the game is big. Really, really big. So big, in fact, that in terms of player count and revenue, in 2014, Crossfire was the most popular FPS game in the entire world. Bigger than COD, bigger than CSGO. According to the Korea Herald, in 2014, Crossfire was the world's top grossing online game, raking in 1.5 trillion won, the equivalent of $1.3 billion USD, in global sales. So why did Crossfire become so popular in other parts of the world when it failed in North America? Two things, timing and accessibility. You see, when the game was released in China in 2008, esports in China was just getting started, and for many, Crossfire was the first shooter that they could play competitively. Leaning into this, the devs wanted to draw in as many new players as possible. Zhang Ina, the game's chief developer, said in a 2015 interview with the Korea Herald, quote, We made all-out efforts to make it simple, but not to hurt its original fun. And its debut in China was nothing short of a sensation. Within a short period of time, the game was seeing between 200 and 300,000 concurrent users, the kind of numbers that no game in China had ever dealt with. Because of this, disconnects were frequent, but the team managed to increase the capacities of their servers, and today they can easily handle millions of players at once. Which is good, because being the first competitive shooter in a region with 1.3 billion people in it means there's a lot of potential for new players to try your game. On top of this, to start playing Crossfire, you really don't need a high-end computer. I mean, just look at the graphics. The ability to play on a crappy computer meant that the game could also be played in regions that are generally not known for esports. But while the game is undoubtedly a success, both in terms of player count and revenue, Tencent had loftier ambitions for Crossfire, to create an esports league that could rival the best of them. To turn their dream into a reality, in 2019, Tencent announced their intention to invest heavily in Crossfire esports. Their goal was to create an esport league on par with that of CSGO, Overwatch, and League of Legends. A tall order for a 12-year-old game, but still, Tencent forged on and created the Crossfire Franchised League. Crossfire looked like it was about to become one of the biggest esports in the world. And so, they decided it was time to break back into the North American market. However, realizing that people probably didn't want to play a game from 2007, Crossfire would be getting an upgrade and would be moving to consoles on the Xbox One. The new game, Crossfire X, promised to bring the same fast-paced gameplay of the original with upgraded graphics and new and improved guns. Unfortunately, the game was a flop. Sure, it looked good, but on release the game had virtually no content, it was filled to the brim with microtransactions, and it was hugely imbalanced. I mean, just look at this. Look at it. How is that fair? Crossfire found a ton of other niches which it could work its way into, such as the mobile market. The Crossfire mobile spin-off made the game immensely popular in regions like Southeast Asia and especially Vietnam. Plus, Crossfire wasn't just restricted to video games. For example, did you know there's a Crossfire TV show? The South China Morning Post describes the Crossfire TV series as, quote, based on the popular South Korean first-person shooting game of the same name, Crossfire tells a coming-of-age story about two young Crossfire gamers, played by Chinese movie stars Lu Han and Leo Wu, trying to carve out a career in esports. Without diving too much into the specifics, all you need to know is that this show had more than 980 million views within four weeks of its release on June 20th, 2020. There's still tons of interest in the game, and it remains one of the most popular in terms of player base and revenue. Unfortunately, as we've already mentioned, the same cannot be said for those outside of Asia. You see, while the game was flourishing in regions like China, there actually was a small dedicated community who played the game competitively in North America and Europe. For years, they ran their own events, played in scrimmages, and dealt with the game's poor online infrastructure. This splinter faction of the main game felt like they had been completely abandoned by their developers. But the worst was yet to come. In 2018, Crossfire consolidated North America, Latin America, and Europe into one single region simply known as West. While the game could still be played on North American servers, the player base was so small that in order to compete in ranked, NA Crossfire players had to use EU servers located in Germany, often fighting through ping consistently over 100. Still, the game is thriving in China and other regions. 
The game is also popular in places like Egypt and Brazil, thanks to the game being playable on less powerful computers. Maybe someday the game will make its triumphant return to the West, but until then, Crossfire will continue to be the biggest shooter you've never heard of. Thanks for watching. What are your thoughts about Crossfire? Should there be an effort to revive it in North America? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason B, Brendan, QB, Foxy, Mauve, Pachanas, Pin, Sierra, Shampoo, Spartacus, Tommy, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, and Marco for being Diamond supporters. We really appreciate it. If you want to talk to us, check out our Discord. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.